Hi, I'm Lisa Morgan. I'm a clinical nurse specialist for inpatient rehab and neuroscience. This is my presentation on decreasing indwelling catheter days in an inpatient rehab. These are my objectives. I'm hoping that you can understand a little bit about urinary management um, related to inpatient rehab. And maybe you can adapt some of these methods into your own clinical practice. So the patient population for inpatient rehab typically are conditions such as stroke, MS, Guillain-Barre, spinal cord injury. These conditions predispose patients to having and experiencing urinary retention at some point along their journey. The rehab goal is overall to get someone home but not just to get someone home, to get someone home at a functional status where they are able to go back to their way of life. And part of functional status and being successful at home is being able to manage your own urine and bowel needs. Urinary management for urinary retention typically is managed with the insertion of an indwelling catheter. This is not really conducive to the needs of a patient in rehab as well as going home, it can be cumbersome for a patient to deal with. Intermittent catheterization is a method that is used for a patient so they can manage their own urine needs related to retention. The overall purpose and aim of this whole project was to decrease the number of days um, that an indwelling catheters were used on inpatient rehab, not just for functional status, but also does increase the patient's risk of infection. Indwelling catheter days on inpatient rehab, um, they were very high. And they we were well above benchmark compared to other inpatient rehabs. And looking at our patients, we really wanted to help them with a successful transition home. This is one of the methods that we used. We looked at ARN, which is the American Nurses um, Association for Rehab. And we were looking for evidence-based practice. What is the best way and is there evidence behind the ways and methods that we're going to help these patients not have, not have an indwelling catheter or not need one? So we looked at each patient. Um, did they come in with a catheter? Had they already had a catheter? It required another catheter as um, retention occurred. And you know, if a patient was voiding, we, can, we also checked um, post-board residuals. We looked at patients prior to coming in, and we worked with our admission liaisons for screening these patients. This really helped with communication between the team. This is um, inserted into emails, and they collect this information. And this email goes to the entire admitting team, the physicians and nursing, and it really helps understand what is going on with that patient. What have they already had done? As a clinical nurse specialist, I used um, intentional rounding. I went and rounded on each patient that had an indwelling catheter in place, um, talked and collaborated with the entire medical team and looked at, does this patient really need an indwelling catheter? Um, have we tried intermittent catheterization? You know, do they meet the qualifications to have an indwelling catheter in place? looked also at the equipment that we had available. At the time, we were using your basic straight cath kit, which is not typically what people are discharged home with. And it's really hard to teach someone how to cath themselves if you don't have the same equipment that they're going to use when they go home. So I worked with the vendors, and now we have a supply of all different types of catheters, and we're able to teach that patient exactly how they're going to cath themselves using the same type of catheter that they're going to go home with. Um, I, in that process of teaching the patient, we're able to create an individualized patient teaching plan. Um, we are able to get the family involved and make this really patient-centered. With that, we're able to meet the patient where they are, able to look at any physical disabilities they have or limiting factors. Part of that is, you know, teaching the patient, if they're gonna be in a wheelchair, how do you cast yourself in a wheelchair if you're out in public? 
um, different things like that. Or if you have weakness in your hands, are there certain catheters that we can find to help you? So that way it makes it easier for you. And it's with that, it's going to help with compliance if you're able to teach that patient exactly for what they're going to need. These are our results. Um, prior to the implementation of this process, we were at 325 days, which I said is well above benchmark for inpatient rehab centers. Um, post implementation, we got down to 172 days. We did have a little uptick. There were some things going on in the units and transition of providers. We continue to push forward with the process and work on it. Quarter one of 2022, we were at 41 catheter days, which is below the benchmark for inpatient rehabs. This um, got us down to an 88.6% decrease from when we started. The initiation of the rehab specific urinary management protocol, purposeful hourly rounding, collaboration with the whole medical team as well as interdisciplinary team, we got OT involved as well. This, those processes were able, allowed us to decrease the catheter utilization days. The patient-centered teaching um, really promoted that discharge home, as well as decreasing the need for reinsertion of an indwelling catheter. The patients that we were able to educate with the catheters that they were going to go home with, they were able to manage their own urinary needs even prior to discharge. This is my contact information. Feel free to reach out. Thank you.